Well, it looks like I've got another wee job to do. And it's not on the bikes or on the car, but on a Ryobi two-stroke whippersnapper or strimmer, whatever you want to call it. This is my son-in-law's, it's got a fixed blade here. So, um, yeah, it means business. So when I was using it, it was running, but what was happening was every time I actually went to cut the grass, it would die like it was power, power, uh, losing power. He thought it was maybe something jammed in here that was making it toil to turn, but the whole thing turns freely. Um, but we'll have a wee look. It could be the carb. I mean, look how filthy it is. So I'll as you can see, it's it. pretty filthy. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Just a bit burst my roof. Take the air filter off here. That could do a clean, it's black. There's a lot of oil in here. I reckon it's maybe been putting too much two stroke in it, perhaps. That's quite possible. So, what I'll do is I'll just strip it, clean it, and see how we go. So we'll have a, a wee look into the depth of this machine. It's um, torque sockets that it uses. Um, I think that's way too big. I said I should fit it then. And it does. So I'll just whip all the screws off of that. Cover. And then we'll see what lurks below. But it could be needing a good clean, it could be oil on the spark plug, you know, it's even on the lead for the spark plug. I don't even know how this one works. Um, yeah. Now that's that off. Let's see this. Yeah. It's been hot. Kind of half melting. Oh, there's another couple of screws. There we go. So if you ever have one of these Ryobis and your string breaks, as you can see these bits are screwed in here. And this reel, you could put a new string on it. Another thing to check is it's got a wee bit of lube in there so as it can uh, pull in and out quick. Shaft looks all right. Everything looks fine in there. I wonder what the plug's like. You know what, I think I'll take the whole cover off. I think it splits. show you how this works. So here is a shaft. Now as you can see I can turn that with my finger and that turns the other end. You can see it turning. Yeah so that shaft is straight through there. There's probably bearings down there somewhere but that's turning pretty smooth. This is a clutch, centrifugal clutch. So what happens is this sits inside here and spins, but when you rev it, it throws these springs, it throws these out. I can't do it because it's a tight spring. It throws them out and they grip against this and then it turns your strimmer. So when you let the revs off, they close back in, the spring pulls them back in and it free wheels. So, and that's more or less how it works. And here's the electrical cable that connects it to the handle. So we'll take that off um, and have a wee look. It's covered in oil, it's absolutely covered in oil. But we'll take it all off, we'll have a wee look at it and we'll try and find out why. 
it's not right. working properly. So it looks pretty clean in here. So I'm quite happy with this. Obviously the electrics are working. I thought it was maybe gummed up, but the fins are free flowing with air, so it's keeping it cool. Now just to explain, it's a two stroke as opposed to a four stroke. So because it's two stroke, it doesn't have engine oil. You actually put the oil into the petrol, into the fuel. And when it sucks the fuel into the carburetor, through these little pipes, the oil in it, it actually goes in through, through the crankcase and everything. So the oil that's in the fuel lubricates everything and then it's burned off here. Um, and that's why two-strokes smoke a bit and that's why you don't really have two-stroke cars nowadays because they're burning oil. Um, so, yeah, one of the most important things with a two-stroke is keep your mixture correct. Don't underdo it or the thing will heat up and seize. Don't overdo it or it'll oil up and gum up. Um, and make sure everything's always clean. You see all the residue oil in here? That means somebody's just been adding oil into it and hoping it's the right amount rather than measuring out the the, the correct amount and usually when you buy a machine it tells you on it it says on here 50 to 1 ratio so that's one part of oil to 50 parts of fuel so yeah you need to work that out I'll take this tank off and clean it out and I'll put the proper ratio of fuel in um, just in case you're wondering what kind of fuel it is you can put anything in it really um, I usually just put a normal, you know, 95 rating in, um, and that does it. So there's another wee guide here, 10 to 1, which is 1 litre is 100 millilitres of oil, 5 litres is 500 mil, that's for a 10 to 1, this is a 50 to 1, um, so if a 10 to 1 is 100 mils, cut that down, 5 into 100 is what, 20? 20 so let's take this throttle off. So to turn it, we should be able to turn it 45 degrees and it should come off. Oh, there it is, it's a wee hooky thing. I don't know if you can see that. It's a wee hook, so that'll come off here and we'll get a big screwdriver or a socket, torque socket. We'll take this off. That's it. So that pulls out. Now I'll get this cleaned up before I put this back together. Now I'll get an old cloth in here. And I'll just stick this over here in my vice seat away. Using brake cleaner, you can use anything you want really, but as long as you got all the oil off it and all the shit out of it. Now, that's that done, we can get that out of the way. Here's the carburetor scoot, here's the other one. We'll give that a wee clean, unfortunately, Biker Dan doesn't have a parts cleaner, but who needs one, eh? I'll put these screws over here. Give this cover a wee clean. Because it's a bit oil and shitty. That one goes in there. That's on the bent one. Bottom one's on the bent one. Right. So let's give it a wee clean. So here we are again, or I should say I'm back, and I'll show you what I found. Right, so I blew all my things out, and <laughs> hang that, and this blew out. Now as you can see it's a gauze filter for the fuel, this is absolutely choked. 
Okay, and it was in here. And when I blew this, I eventually blew this filter off. And inside here was all choked with crud. Now, this is... Um, I don't know if that's a return. No, that'll be the one bringing the fuel in. Um, and it was hardly letting anything at all. So I've blew it all out. Everything's blown out. It's all ready to put together. But I just want to clean this wee... Oh, Jesus, it's blown everywhere but the right way. I've rubbed it with my finger, so it seems to be... Oh yeah. It's very fine. But as you can see it's blown right through it, so you could take this out, but then the rest of the cab's gonna choke, eh? So Pull it through. This one, I think this must be the one that goes to the back of the pump for three minutes. But anyway, that's much better. You know what, I'll take that tank off and give it a good clean, I think. So let's have a wee look at a spark plug, if we've got a spanner here to fit. There we go. Yeah, the plug doesn't look too bad. The plug looks quite good actually. Let's have a look inside the cylinder. I don't think you'll be able to see that, but it doesn't look too bad in there, just one second. I don't know if you'll be able to see in there or not. Um, it doesn't look too bad, it's actually quite clean on top of the person. The whole inside's spotless, so that tells me but the machine's okay, um, it's obviously sparking and firing, it's just been the fuel, it's just been shitting the fuel, it's managed to get through. Um, it's like it's corrosion, some sort of corrosion in the fuel, so I think, uh, yeah, I think once this is cleaned up, once I get new pipes for the fuel tank, um, then I can set to work rebuilding the whole thing again, but that'll be tomorrow, so... See you tomorrow. Well, it's day two. And look what I got. It's a fuel system um, tune up kit. So it's a filter. There's a two different sizes bowls for priming and the two hoses. There's one's the, the main feed and one is the, the return pipe. So seemingly after a year or two, these things just collapse and they gum up the, the carburetor. So they do a service kit, um, 25 bucks, it's not expensive. The part number is ACC041, in case you, you want to get one. Um, and it's got the filter on it as well. Now, I would advise, if you've got one of these Ryobi strimmers, whippersnippers, whatever you want to call them, is every year give it a service and spend 25 bucks on a service kit, in the long run, it's going to save you having to strip a carburetor, clean it out. Um, yeah, so it'll be money worth spent. So anyway, let's get this fitted. So in this kit, we got 
two of these, that's uh, the, the pump for priming. Um, so this is uh, this is a smaller one than this one. So what I have to do is take two screws off of here um, and change all that again. But that's okay, don't mind. I'll just go ahead and change this over. So there's the, oops, there's the screws out, there's the ball. I'll set the carburetor down here, out the way. And this just pushes out. Like that, and then get the other one. Is it that one or is it the big one? No, it's a small one. Just pop that through there. That's a bit better. And carefully put all this back together again. Yeah. It's actually easier pushing that on, it sort of clips on, and then put the bracket on top. Um, and I'll go ahead and I'll re-screw all this back in. And just keep going around them, make sure they're all nipped up nice and tight. Now, we're going to fit the hoses. So, this one here's the return. So, so I found my easiest way. Just push it down and pull it up. It's a nice tight fit. And you want to get your it's just getting it fed and then twist. Twist on. Like that. Then once it's right on, get a spring and just On too far there. I don't think that filter will come off in a hurry. Yeah. And this is just going to lie in the bottom of your tank. It is heavy, so it'll stay down the bottom. Now all you need to do next, it's the same with this, this has to go in and sit sort of halfway, it's just a return, you don't want it pushed right down to the bottom, just in through the hole and halfway. And again, there, that's the return, and that's the feed. So I just need to cut them to the right length. I'll put the cap on just now, just to stop dirt going in there as soon as I've cleaned it. Now, let's start rebuilding this. First of all, I took the exhaust off. So I'm going to put that back on again. So there's this heat proof shield which it is, it's a, I don't know what you call that material, it acts as a gasket as well. So I'll put that on, I'll get the two screws for this. Which is these big long ones. Oh, now before I do that, my new smoke black cover, pop that on there, now this is a heat proof paint, I don't know if I mentioned that before, I 
Again, don't overdo it with them. It's only a wee alloy engine. And then, let me see, let me see. Now I'm just going to I'm just going to screw this onto the the cover just now just to hold it or else it's going to be all over the place I'm just putting this into the actual machine because it's going to hold the engine better it's not going to be flopping about as much So right now I'm going to put the, the fuel tank on um, Where the hell did I put the rest of these screws now? And that's that. So we're just starting to, to build her back up again. So I'm putting the carburetor on. Just do them. Don't overdo them. Takes a wee bit to tighten by the time it's squeezing down a couple of gaskets there. I think that's tight enough, tighter than I want to go. Which is the matter of trimming these hose lines. Now the clear one is the fuel line, which is this straight pipe. So what I'm going to do is just cut it to length. And this one's the return. So we'll just do the same with this. Slide it on. There we go. And we're all set to go. I think. Um, yeah. So choke. On, off, on, off, done all that, let me see, there's old fuel filter, so this cover can go back on here, so I've cleaned this, I cleaned this yesterday with brake cleaner, so it's, it's pretty clean, it should do the job, so I'll put that back on here, just to stop dirt from going into the carburetor, and... There's two wee holes that this goes on to it. If I can, oh, bloody hell. If I can see them. Yes. And that's it on. You're choking underneath, on and off. Yeah. Okay. I'll stick this back in again just to stop the dirt getting in. So all I need to do is put the pull start on. So the pull start is quite simple, it just pushes, this pushes onto here. These wee lugs catch this so it'll only turn it one way and it'll free wheel when the engine starts. Um, I'll give it a wee clean up first. Nearly there. I'll just screw these back on. Done. Now, just need to get some fuel and some two-stroke oil. Ta-da! Two-stroke oil. I'll just go and get some fuel. 
there we go so I've just put fuel in it now one of the most important things about running a two-stroke is use proper fuel and set it at the mixture this is 50 to 1 so I bought this bottle for Mac so all you do is fill it up to the fuel line and there's the 50 to 1 mark so you fill it up to there with, with petrol on that line and then you top it up to the 50 to 1 mark with the two-stroke oil and that's your mix done simple don't guess it don't overdo it because it just fills the motor up don't underdo it or you'll burn your motor out don't use dirty waste oil engine oil shit like that because there's stuff in it and it just chokes up your carburetor and well it's not exactly a lubricant because waste oil's taking out an engine because it's not lubricating as good as it should so it's not going to lubricate your two-stroke anyway that's that done so i'll just give it a wipe over and then we'll go and try and start it so i'm going to take this round the back of the house to give it a try i've not got much at the front that needs cut but i'll try it with a wee bit of grass at the back and see how we get on um yeah hopefully it'll work okay or at least i'm hoping it does got some long stuff there uh, Okay, let's see how it goes. Let me see, let's prime the fuel. Oh, and there's the petrol going, so you can see it nice and clearly. Into the cab, I'll put a choke on. Switch on, and... A little warm up for a second. One half choke. So, tick over's a bit high, so there's a wee stop in here, let's put the, let's see it the way, I'll screw this in, and then see what a tick over's like, I've screwed it in one turn, and if it's too high we'll turn it back, oh, We'll take it off of the glass table. So I just fathomed something out, I done the hoses wrong. So the inlet is this top one, and the outlet's the bottom one here. Um, I had them on the wrong way around. Don't know why, but however, we'll give that a try and see what it's like. So I've adjusted the tick over again. Hopefully this will fix it. Don't know why it cuts out like that though, but... That's it done, that seems to be working fine, so, geez that's unstrong, so uh, yep I can send that round to Mick now and he can go and cut his grass, hope that was useful and I'll catch you later, bye.